Good day, everybody. Brian here, quantlabs.net. We are getting hosted, or I should say, showing you a question on quant, quantstackexchange.com. Question was HFT pure C. So high frequency trading using pure C, no C. Coding with statistical arbitrage engine without getting involved in C. Will I be restricted when using FPGA or f similar hardware accelerators? There's se uh, a serious pressure in favor of C++ on NVIDIA and CUDA. Uh, this is a pretty good comment, and I totally agree with it from Bob Jan Jansen. Jansen. Uh, number of jobs required. Number of jobs that require just C is a lot smaller than the number of jobs requiring C or C++. I believe a lot. If you want to succeed, this seems like an unnecessary way to put yourself at a disadvantage. Now, let's just remind you, C is pretty well the language where everything started in a major way, where Linux was written in, C++ itself, the compiler was written in, uh, and quite a bit of, few again, use MATLAB for FPGA or Simulink. Uh, C can be used for this purpose, but there's some serious limitations with it. I'm not going to tell you here, but you still have to write your own memory uh, handler. And among other things, it's very primitive, but it has its advantages if you're willing to put the work in. But uh, let me show you the, the uh, Bible of this uh, language. So like I said, there's this book here, the C programming language from... Kerningham and Ritchie. This is a very popular book. This is what got me started. This is a book from 1988. Just want to go over some of the concepts of this. I like the language, but that was back in 88, 1988. So pretty primitive stuff back then. No IDEs either. It's you, a compiler, command line, and print statements. So, uh, in C, you have variables and basic uh, arithmetic. Uh, if you're really good at C, and it's not hard, you just use a for loop. Uh, there's a one style of for loop, as far as I remember. Um, then you get into the basic concept of input and output. Um, and it's raw. It's There's no libraries added on. It's just pretty well raw, primitive features. File copying, character counting, line counting. Continuing along, we have file copying, character counting, line counting, and word counting. Simple stuff. This is before when algorithms became really sophisticated. There was only one sort of loops, functions, arguments. This is where C gets very interesting, call by value, uh, character arrays and uh, fun stuff then if you want to get fancy pants uh we can move into uh this one right here where it started all increment and de de decrement operators we have to do masking or type conversions logical and relational uh operators ath ath arithmetic declarations constants and a lot of the C++ obviously came out of this language. This is where it gets interesting. Bitwise operator, uh, assignment conditional expressions, and precedent and order of evaluation. This is critical to master language, to know what gets evaluated. If you're doing interviews, this is where they can trip you up. Knowing uh, if you have an if statement, what gets run first, and uh, the order of evaluation. So the control flow, and a lot of the languages come out of C uh, as a reminder. If else, switch, loops, while, before, do while. You know how to properly do break and continue. Shouldn't be a whole lot used, go to's and labels. It's what we call spaghetti code, uh, spaghetti coding. Uh, then we get into the different types of functions. Uh, external scope rules, static variables, register variables, block variables, 
complicated stuff, recursion, that can get pretty messy if not done properly. You can blow up your stack. Uh, then we get into the C pre-processing. Uh, C++ can work like this as well. Uh, this is before object-oriented programming. File inclusion, macro, substitution, conditional. This is where uh, C++ is gonna get really complicated very quickly. All with pointers, uh, addressing, uh, pointers and function arguments. No other language does this really. I mean, C++ can do it differently, but with C, it, 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 this is where C really optimizes the memory that's available. But part of the disadvantage there is you have to take care of um, uh, taking, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, allocating memory and then deallocating memory. Because again, if you don't properly deallocate it, you can blow up the uh, stack and run out of memory very quickly. Here, uh, the structures can get easy, hard, and very complicated quickly. Uh, bit fields, especially at the end there, right here. All right, so this is where uh, C can get very limited. Again, input, output. So here you can see we're already at 125. I think there's about 200 pages here in this book. Yeah, about 200. So in here in, um, let's see here. This is where it gets complicated pretty quickly as well. Uh, input, output. Basic stuff, printf, that's all you have. Uh, argument list, scanf for input, file access, uh, standard errors, and exiting. Um, line in and out, string operator. I'm not going to get into any of these. Random uh, generation. Here, mathematical, very basic mathematical. A lot of it you had to write your own. Sometimes you would have your third party uh, libraries in math. Primitive back then didn't exist, not a whole lot. Storage management, uh, can't remember which one that, if that's file or not. A mm, lot of stuff here. Okay, and then we get into the Unix. So remember there's Unix, which started back in probably in the 60s. IBM, HP started Unix, and then out of that came Linux. Uh, so when uh, Linus, started writing Linux, he wrote the entire uh, OS operating system in C. He liked it. Then he moved to C++, didn't like it, and went back to rewrite a bunch of C and or Rust. Uh, here in the Unix system, this is where you're really taking advantage of the operating system. You don't want to be, I mean, you could do things in S Windows with C, there's so much going on in the background in, in uh, Windows, even in modern day Windows, that there's so much stuff happening on Windows that it, 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 your C pro your C program is going to compete for those resources against Windows and other <laughs> programs. So it's better to keep it very primitive uh, in a Linux or a Unix environment to minimize that impact of competing competing against cycles and resources on the processor. File descriptors, low level, read and write, uh, open, create, close, unlink. These are the different ways to read uh, files, binary files, uh, text files and the like. And there's different ways to do it optimally. Okay, so LC, because as just an example, would be faster than an F with, that, with the F open versus the standard text uh, file because it's um, more a machine format, I guess you'd call it. Okay, uh, here we have reference manuals, lexical conventions, tokens, comments, identifiers, keywords, constants. This is probably about more about best practices, uh, how, to, how to style your coding, uh, meaning of identifiers, uh, conversions, uh, void as an example, which you know, obviously C is used. Uh, pointers and integer integers. Pointers is the big one that confused people. Uh, the different data types, I guess, and how to convert them. Uh, integer, floating, different length, 
of memory used for these types of variables, uh, arithmetic conversion, how to do it, um, and then pointers, how that can be done optimally as well. So expressions, again, this can get very ugly very quickly. Uh, if it's using logical, uh, all kinds, but I'm not gonna get into that a whole lot, but it can be done very efficiently, which a lot of the HFT shops like. And I wouldn't be surprised a lot of them will probably use C, C uh, operating and, and, and encoding styles to really minimize uh, the, uh, minimize the, uh, again, optimize the, the, the code. So I've seen in like C++ and some of these shops will use inline C uh, to really speed up the uh, coding. Some will even go as, uh, down all the way down to assembler or as the question came out for FPGA, but that's at a higher level or can be at a higher level. Um, again, a lot of this uh, stuff here is what makes C unique. I would probably take a look at it, but here is the standard library, okay? There's only one library. There's no, um, with C++ you have, the standard library, then you have ASIO, Boost, a bunch of different libraries that you can combine, or STL, uh, whereas there's all these different libraries in C++, but there's only one in C. So it's very basic. So here you have the input output, standard library, okay? Uh, here you have the character type, string handling, Mathematical functions, very basic stuff. Standard library for utility. Uh, diagnostics for your testing. Uh, and then uh, your arguments, signaling, time handling, date time handling, and uh, the different limits uh, that you can do within C. And uh, it's a pretty cool language if you have time. That's probably one of the languages I'd start with. And master Python and C would probably be a good combination, and then add in your C. You should be good to go with C. Uh, it could take a while, I've already covered that in a prior video uh, videos on that and, and the benefits of it for job wise and career. But if you have the time, C is a fun language to play with, and I'd really only stick it out with uh, Linux if you want more of a of a Unix style, go with BSD. Any of the BSDs would be good. Open BSD, free BSD, and the like. Hopefully, I'll help you out. If this is overwhelming, you can always do the easy path. Go to quantlabsnet.com, learn about Trading View, click on the learn, sign up, and you'll get features about Trading View. Thanks for watching.